Tis I! Yes, tis I, and today I'm going to show you how to sew a pirate costume. So let's begin. To start on making your pirate costume, cut out four layers of this shape out of black material from a sheet. Make sure it fits you and stab the fabric with pins and sew the material together. I did this while listening to the book of Deuteronomy for Bible class, or as a Scottish guy at my church used to say, Deuteronomy. Sew around the edges of the material and sew the sides together. Your goal with this costume should be to make a brave and terrifying pirate costume. It should be so scary that your friend standing on the top of a porta potty will scream in fear. <laughs> Slash open the material and stare at it wonderingly, realizing that it somewhat resembles a piece of candy. Next you will want to use some zip ties to add structure to your fabric or just to keep you from moving. By the way, if you're hoping for this costume to be historically accurate, let your hopes crash to the ground now because historical pirate costumes I have not done much research on. Distractedly mark where your zip ties will go and, uh, this is why I was distracted. Transport yourself to the garage where you will take out some of your anger on those grommets that you are going to put in. Then, if you are absolutely terrible at putting in grommets, stitch all over them with thread so they will be stronger and ever so slightly more historical the next day. Okay, so before we get any further on the costume, I have my co-op today, which if you didn't know, I'm homeschooled, and I have a presentation, and I'm bringing a duct tape body mannequin with a styrofoam head because it's creative. So I am literally carrying a gigantic black trash bag with a literal body in it. To the library. So yeah, the library thing went really well, I did my presentation, and then I got a lot of weird stares and comments from some kids who apparently thought it was out of the ordinary to walk around with two fake heads and a duct tape mannequin. Then it was time to go scare some random people from my class who were the most curious and disturbed about why I came to school with such props. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, that was quite fun. There are literally three heads in the back seat. if that is not, like, really creepy. Once you have arriveth back home, cut out two huge sleeves, each the size of a very young human. Oh, not me. A, a child. Then, use blue sharpie to trace out the shape of a large tank top the size of two very young humans. Sew those pieces together everywhere except for your neck hole and one, two, or possibly three armholes. Fold over the top of the neckline like you are folding over the page of a book when you don't feel like using a bookmark. Once you have cemented the hem in place, actually if you were using cement to make your costume it's gonna be really heavy so I wouldn't recommend that. Use your sewing machine to create a hem and then use elastic, string, spider silk, or toilet paper to bunch up the outside of the dress. Now it's time for sleeves. Run each sleeve through the the sewing machine on a basting stitch and satisfyingly bunch the sleeves in place. Then create a hem for the bottom of the sleeve and put some elastic in there too. And now it's time for a pirate reveal. There was once a great pirate. Tis I. Indeed, and her name was Berthalina Agnes Mildred Beard the Third. Call me Bertha. She was a sweet girl with puffy sleeves and a cool swing, but she had not any friends, for she grew up alone on a ship with her mother and father, Winifred Myrtle Beard and Ernest Egbert Beard. Their last name was Beard because their family was related to an old pirate named Blonde Beard a distant cousin of the pirate Blackbeard. One day, while briefly settled on land in the northwestern ocean islands, Bertha decided to make a friend. Do you want to be friends? And the little chicken did want to be friends. So she placed the chicken on her shoulder, like a generic pirate might do with his parrot, and deemed their friendship worthy of continuing. So Bertha and her chicken, who she named Alberta Ethel Gertrude Beard, lived happily ever after. The End